Appetite for Horror, episode number 16. Today we have with us Sarah Wayne Callies. Uh, you may know her from her leading roles in Colony, Prison Break, and of course as Lori Grimes, the mega hit The Walking Dead. And now she's expanding her passion for storytelling uh, as the creator, writer, director, and voice of the science fiction post-apocalyptic scripted podcast, Aftershock. Entering its second season on iHeartRadio and wherever you get your podcasts, Sarah joins us now. Hello, Brando. How are you doing? Sarah, how are you? I'm really well. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I feel like it's appropriate that even though we're on Zoom, we're not seeing each other because of your new podcast, how it's just real theater of the mind kind of stuff. And when you say, correct me if I'm wrong, because when you say podcast now, you think of two people talking, interviews, but I feel like Aftershock goes back to the old school radio days, state of the mind and sound effects and just, uh, if you can please, if if people who don't know, tell us about Aftershock. Yeah, I mean, you're you're right. It's a throwback to that sort of War of the Worlds uh, kind of audio drama. Right. Um, You know, they're calling them scripted podcasts or fiction podcasts. Um, But yeah, it's, you know, it's television with your eyes closed. And, <laughs> you know, we had uh, uh, my my producing partners and I had an idea for a real, real big story. And um, we realized that probably the best way to tell it would be to let people's imaginations do the special effects rather than trying to pull together some four hundred million dollar budget. Hmm. Um and, you know, still in 10 years, the special effects are going to be dated and look a little silly, maybe even five years. Right. That we would let people's imaginations pull those images that were tailored to them. So the story that we're telling, right, the earthquake everyone's always been talking about, it hits, it levels L.A., 13 miles off the coast in international waters, a new island rises up out of the ocean. So the question of that first season is who goes there and why? It's the story of westward expansion mm. told now with uh centered on women centered on people of color and uh we follow cassie who uh, i play who is going to that island desperate to save a young woman um to fulfill the dying wish of somebody that she loves and she gets to the island with the help of a kind of good samaritan that she meets along the way and then people keep coming to that island and the question is what do they want and are they running from something? Are they running to something? And then people start dying and the bodies start piling up. And the question is, you know, how safe are people on a new island without any kind of, you know, law and order 13 miles off the coast? There's no there's no government out there. Uh, and what's killing everyone? So we, we tell the story kind of wrapped up in a mystery. You're... By the end of the first season, mm-hmm. everybody's got a lot of blood on their hands. <laughs> so season two becomes kind of an exploration of atonement and apology and forgiveness. How do you, you know, when you've done the unthinkable, uh, how do you make that right? And can you make it right? You're obviously, I don't need to tell you this, you're good at what you do, because as you're talking right now, the amount of images going through my head and just eagerness to to listen to season two and uh, to find out about the story. So it's interesting, because I guess one of the questions going into it, which you kind of answered, that it was meant to be a scripted podcast because like you said uh graph uh, effects could be outdated in just a few years so this is just kind of almost everlasting as an actor is there a, a, is it more challenging to do something like because you obviously you amount of shows and movies that you've been in but now you're leaving it up to the audience so what is it like for you and because uh, i'm assuming and tell me if i'm wrong with this also are you talking to uh, are you by yourself when you're reading the script? Or are you with other actors in the same room? Are you feeding off each other? Because it's got to be quite a different challenge. Yeah, you know, the the, the production part of it is a challenge. Um, and, you know, we've got all these great actors, right? You know, Dave Harbour, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Morgan Tati Gabriel, Janelle Parrish, all these really, really wonderful folks. And that means they're busy. <laughs> so, <laughs> Right. Um, as much as I really wanted everybody in the same room at the same time, that just wasn't going to happen. Sure. So what we would do is we would get people um, we'd get people in various studios, right? iHeart's uh, iHeart's our our studio. And so they've got studios in New York, LA, uh, New York, Atlanta and L.A. 
And we would get as many people as we could in those studios. And then we'd ship a mic to Dave Harbour, who was, you know, off in the middle of nowhere in England for a little bit uh, in the countryside. And we'd set him up and he'd do, you know, he'd record in his closet for sound. And we would do as much as we could. Um, there were inevitably some scenes where you'd have to have the actors on different days. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard from a performance perspective. Um, but everybody was kind of game and I would read opposite, you know, so if Dave wasn't available on one day and he had a scene with Jeff, I would do my best Dave impression for Jeff and do my best Jeff impression for Dave. Uh, and they okay. would inevitably laugh at me and be like, just read the words and I'll, <laughs> I'll fill in the rest. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it took, it's part of the reason the second season took so long okay. is because uh, we had all these actors everywhere. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm excited about it. And we took some big swings when it comes to the story. And uh, we're we're dealing with a few things I'm not sure everyone's going to love. I'm, I'm hoping that the audience takes the journey with me, but it's also possible that people are going to be like, yeah, I disagree with this. Um, and, you know, we took some risks creatively. And that's, it's exciting to be able to do that. And I actually think that's another thing that podcasting allows us to do is take sure. big creative risks yeah, um, absolutely. and see how they pan out. Oh, absolutely. And it's, I'm excited to hear it. And I think as a podcaster going from radio, it's like, yeah, there's a lot of creative things that you can do. Uh, I know I only have you here for another minute or so. And I would be remiss because I'm obviously like a million other people, uh, a massive fan of The Walking Dead. I recently just did a binge rewatch the entire series mm. from be beginning to end because and this is wow. this ties everything in together because i i just became a dad um congratulations thank you my son harrison or horrorson uh, i guess because i, I watched <laughs> he was uh, he was falling asleep on me as like the mo zombies are munching on people so what i said to my wife you know i had a little bit of diff difficult labor and believe me yeah. I, there's, a, there's a point to this i said at least you're not giving birth on the basement where zombies are trying to eat you in, 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 a, in a prison. Could you possibly, and again, I know we don't have a lot of time, tell me about filming that scene, uh, just what a powerful scene that was. And I don't know, spoiler Oof. alert, you know, it's you don't really, well, whatever you could tell us. Well, you know, the beautiful thing about that scene, that was my last day on set. Um, and I almost the entire cast came, and I didn't know because I was at a certain point, I was stuck to the floor. There was so much blood uh -huh. that between the prosthetic belly and the blood effects, I couldn't get up. And so our director, God bless him, Guy Furland, just got down on the ground with me and would lay there with me between shots. Uh -huh. um, and Guy and I go all the way back. His first episode directing anything was on the first season of Prison Break. So we've been oh. friends our whole careers. And, you know, we would sort of lie there on the ground and uh, Chandler and I were, you know, trying to stay as connected as we could. And there was a lot of real emotion there. Like, mm. I, you know, I'd watch this young man start to grow up um, and I truly love the kid. And, I, you know, he'd been almost attached to me physically for almost every episode that he'd been in. And all mm. of a sudden I'm leaving the show and there were a lot of big emotions that day. And he did such extraordinary work. And then at the end of the day, they unstick me. And I'm kind of waddling out to my trailer so I can shower off all this blood. And there is almost the entire cast. They've driven an hour and a half out from Atlanta wow. to sit there and just be there. And I, I couldn't say anything. I just stood there with tears streaming down my face and hugged a bunch of people and got them bloody. And then we <laughs> drove down uh, the road to the to the roadhouse and uh, had a few shots of apple pie moonshine. And I can't tell you what happened after that. Cause I don't <laughs> really remember. Um, but it was amazing. It was, it was one of the best days I've ever had on a set. Amazing. Thank you, Sarah, for sharing that. And I hope we get to do this again. Absolutely. And uh, congratulations to Harrison. And I hope your wife is, uh, I hope she's all right. Labor is a bloody business. Oh man, yeah. No matter where you do it or how. <laughs> We're all good now. But yeah, at the time I just kept, it's just interesting. I'm interviewing you now and I specifically used you as an example of how to get through it. At least you're not in the bottom of a prison, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I hope she took that. Um, I hope she took that better than I would have. I probably would have ripped my husband's head off. Oh, if you brought fair, anything up like that. Fair enough. <laughs> she laughed. She did laugh. Well, she's a good person. Thank she's you. a good person. Good to see you, Brando. Likewise. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, what a sweetheart. And I was not expecting this interview. I mean, the fact that I just did a rewatch, a binge rewatch 
recently of The Walking Dead. So her character, while for those of us who watched in real time The Walking Dead, has been dead for years. I felt like I just relived that death scene over again, sticking through my mind. And I really did make that comment to my wife who kind of, you know, laughed it off, being like, ha, ha, you know, you and the zombies, ha, ha, ha. Uh, but it, it, very cool to get to speak with her today, and hopefully next time it'll be for a little bit longer. So thanks for finding Appetite for Horror. Follow along with us in between the broadcasts, because I'm not sure when the next ones do come out. This is like my second passion project. So the Mothership podcast, Appetite for Distortion, my Guns N' Roses themed podcast, that's where you can find appetite for horror the video versions uh on the the youtube page so like for instance today you can listen to this interview with sarah wherever you get your podcasts obviously but i put up some pictures to for your watching and viewing pleasure uh on the episode version on youtube on the appetite for distortion youtube page so you can check that out there and you can follow appetite for the number four horror on facebook on twitter x x twitter whatever or instagram and that's where the conversations continue in between the broadcasts if you have a perhaps because i love doing radio with anybody if there's a movie review but you don't have a podcast yourself that you want to get out there and talk about let, let's talk let's let's do it if there is a guest that you want me to reach out to to interview send me i do the same thing on the appetite for distortion uh, my listeners get heavily involved you are my producers i'm just the guy with the microphone so let's create some stuff as we go along i will say this though next episode i know my guest anthony c ferranti who is the director of all the sharknado films and can you believe it's the 10th anniversary of Sharknado. Until then, keep feeding that appetite for horror.